Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News update for Thursday, March 31. Local farmers stand to face massive losses with a glut of onions on the market. According to the Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, some retailers have opted to bring in produce from overseas, creating headache for local farmers. At a press briefing today, he called for our government to intervene and to put a stop to the unnecessary imports. Every year, we normally have a relatively good onion crop. Um, and this year happens to be no exception. As a matter of fact, what we are seeing is that farmers have come in with local onions. However, one of the challenges that farmers are constantly faced with is when they do come in with them, we do not have enough buyers coming in. This is largely because of the fact that we have a situation where there are imported onions on the market. And while the, the BADMC does its best to try to manage that situation, where they do not put out imported onions when they recognize they have local onions, this of course does not apply across the board because we have a situation where there are other persons who bring in onions without regard to what is available on the local market. Paul has also joined the call for Barbadians to stop buying peeled sugar canes from the wayside vendors. He says Barbadians must stop supporting thieves who are boldly selling the stolen canes on the highway. I, I really, at this point in time, think that as Barbadians, we need to get serious. And we cannot continue to support persons who are clear thieves, being bold, being brazen, out on the highway, selling products that they came into possession with by illegal means. And I, I really think that if we as Barbadians are serious about food security, supporting our farmers in every way, how can we then reward those persons who go on the highway with stolen produce and buy it from them? We are aiding and abetting the crime. And I really think that it is time that we stop it. I am really making a call now, a special call to Barbadians. Stop purchasing canes from those persons on the highway because clearly those persons have, do not have a cane field. They cannot show that they came into possession of those canes by any legal means and it needs to stop. In other news this Thursday, Barbados now has 100 new citizens. They recited oaths and affirmations this morning during a short ceremony at Solidarity House. Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abrams welcomed people from as far as Russia, Europe and Guyana. He encouraged them to use their skill sets and professional backgrounds to assist the country's rebuilding efforts. You have joined us in the process of rebuilding and rebranding our nation. We value your various professions ranging from painters, welders, hairdressers, climate scientists, prof professors, engineers, pilots, chefs, travel agents, radiographers, and the list goes on. And retired people, I'm assuming you're retired. <laughs> Your choice to be Beijing's is a strong indicator that with this well-blended mix of diverse experiences, cultures, and careers, Barbados will keep punching above its weight. Of those new Bajans, the oldest inductee, 82-year-old Samuel Ryan, and the youngest, 21-year-old Kasur Laki, says they are overjoyed to become citizens. I feel very grateful. Barbados is the best place in the world, I can tell you that. And I pray, I pray every day for the, for, for the heads of government, policemen, doctors, nurses, all in the orderlies, pilots bus drivers, everybody in the world. I love everybody and um, I pray that this government will be very proud. I know my um, Prime Minister, she go all about over the world to help Barbados and I love Barbados. I'm very lucky, I'm very, very excited about this. So, um, the day when I came Barbados, I was I was very nervous, but when I came and I put my foot on the airport and I was so stressed out, but the people were so nice to me and I, it just made me feel as if, wow, I'm always welcome here and 
I was very happy because what happened was that, well, I was very small, so I couldn't lift up my suitcase. Uh, and I think the same time somebody came and helped me, says, it's all right, let me lift it up for you. And they helped me up with that. They helped me to get through, um, well, when I went to counter, they helped me to lift it up. It was very nice. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital has lifted its suspension of patient visits introduced over the past two years to keep COVID-19 at bay. The hospital announced in a statement that starting next Tuesday, the public will be able to visit wards ending in even numbers on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. For wards ending in odd numbers, members of the public will be able to visit on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. A total of 192 new cases, 85 males and 107 females, were identified from the 1,013 tests conducted by the Beso Santos Public Health Laboratory on Wednesday. The cases comprise 37 persons under the age of 18 and 155 who are 18 years and older. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional happenings, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness has described as very productive his historic meeting on Wednesday with the United States Vice President Kamala Harris. Holness meeting at the White House was the first for a Jamaican leader since 1995 when former Prime Minister PJ Patterson held a working meeting there. We get more in this report from TVJ News. We will redouble our efforts in tackling illegal trafficking of weapons and persons the lottery scam, and other transnational crimes. To address this in a decisive way, we are seeking to foster increased partnerships and collaboration on information and intelligence sharing, extradition, and other law enforcement efforts. On the economic development front, we reiterated that we would welcome refocused attention on Jamaica in areas of security, energy, capacity building, mm -hmm. infrastructure, and near-shore digital technology hubs. On the international front, in South Korea, the Constitutional Court in Seoul uphold a ban on tattooing confirming that South Korea is the only developed country that permits no one but medical professionals to perform the procedure. We get the details from Reuters TV. The Constitutional Court in Seoul, South Korea, upheld a ban on tattooing on Thursday, leading tattoo artists to deride the decision, calling it backward and lacking cultural understanding. South Korea is the sole developed country that only allows medical professionals to legally perform the procedure. But despite the decades-old ban, the country has nearly 50,000 tattoo artists who risk potential police raids and prosecution for practicing their trade. Violating the ban is punishable by fines of up to 50 million won, that's over $40,000, and prison terms, usually of two years, though the law provides for as much as life. Tattooist associations have initiated a series of court actions since 2017, challenging the law. They say it breaches their freedom of expression and right to engage in an occupation. In a 5-4 to four vote, the Constitutional Court ruled on Thursday that the law was constitutional. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.